Luke here with catsandcarp.com and I'm going to show you how to catch catfish from the bank. Had a great trip here, caught some wonderful catfish with my boy Tommy. And I'm going to show you the tricks and tips I use to catch some great catfish. So if you're fishing for catfish uh, from the bank, you got a lot of gear to carry. And if you want to get away from the crowd, get away from the boat ramp, find a new spot off the beaten path, you need to carry that gear and you need to be able to do it effectively. And this is a great tool for that. This is a rod quiver made by a company called Fox, but there's a lot of companies that make these and they just go like that, boom. And you can see here it's designed to carry three rods, but I've got, uh, I believe I've got five rods jammed in here and I could probably slam a bunch more. You've got handles and a really nice well padded shoulder strap. And then you've got this big main pouch that runs the length of it. All sorts of stuff will fit in here. Camping chairs will fit in here. Tents will fit in here. You can put your tackle bags and your tackles. So pretty much this holds all my fishing gear. And then I've got a backpack for all of my camping gear. And uh, we're going to be off to the races. One of the important things about bank fishing is choosing your spot. And most of the time, it seems like we choose our spots because they're closest to the parking lot or closest to the dock. Um, you don't have to do this. Get up, walk, get off the beaten path, and find some new spots that nobody else is fishing. It'll take a little bit more time, a little bit more energy. Might be a big pain in the butt, but it can have big payoffs. It's really hard to tell how deep the water is when you're shore fishing, but it's really important to know. That's where the marker float comes in handy. The marker float tells you how deep the water is and what the bottom's like. It's basically a floating bobber, an aerodynamic floating bobber, that you tie on the end of your line and then you have a sliding lead that you put in between your rod and your float. You cast this out, the lead drags the float to the bottom, and then you slowly let out line until your marker float pop comes up to the surface and you measure how much line it takes to make that marker float come back up. That tells you how deep the water is. And by dragging the lead across the bottom, you can tell whether there's gravel or weeds or muck or silt or what it, what's out there. So it allows you to tell what the bottom's like and how deep it is. Let me show you how it works. So this is where braided line comes in handy. There's no stretch in braided line, so it gives you extra sensitivity. It's really easy to tell what's going on on your marker float with braided line. So I reel down, and that lead's on the bottom, and the marker floats tucked all the way to the lead. Then I open up my bale, and I count out how many feet it takes to see that marker float pop up. It's going up to the surface, Dad, and it pops. Pumping. So about 13 feet. Right there, where that marker float is, is about 13 feet. Now what I'll do is I'll go and I'll reel it down. So I'm now back down to the, down to the bottom. And I'm going to reel that thing in about 15, 20 feet. I'm going to do it again. Whoa. It's about 10 feet. Uh, it's about eight feet. The way I'm measuring it is I know that the distance between the reel and the first eye is roughly 24 inches. So I count how many times it takes to get that up. So what we have is a really gra a real gradual slope here. Okay, real gradual slope down to about 13 feet. All right, let me show you an alternative to the traditional fork stick uh, as a rod holder. Find this little gap here and I take this log that spans the, the distance and I pin it down on, on both ends and I'm going to use one big rod holder instead of individual rod holders. I'm going to be fishing with my drag set to the max so I need a rod holder that will keep my rod from going in the water. I'm using industrial twist ties from Home Depot to attach my rods to the log. This keeps my rod from going in the water and it's really strong as you're going to see but it also allows me to fish with the rod tips straight up in the air so that I can watch my rod tips when I'm in my hammock 
several yards away from the shore. I love those twist ties. There's a million uses for them. These are the bite alarms I'm using. They're really super cheapo bite alarms. I think they were like $6 for five or six of them from Amazon.com. And you can see here, they just clamp onto the, uh, the rod and there's this little uh, hook and you feed the line in there. And when the line goes tight, the hook gets pulled out and then this really obnoxious alarm goes off. Now, when you're casting with braided line, make sure you cast with your drag cranked all the way down, all the way down. Because what'll happen is if that drag slips while you're casting, that braid is like a saw and it'll cut through your fingers. Just remember that. For all you parents out here, here's a really slick little gadget. This is the Peapod by Kidco. It's a little travel kids bed or pop-up tent. Boom, how quick is that? Easiest thing in the world to set ready. up and take down. And it's got little mosquito mesh uh, windows in it. Great circulation. It's like 100 degrees on this day. So it's the perfect little one-man tent for my three-year-old. Absolutely one, two, worth every penny. I'm going to put a link in the description of where you can get one. I'm going to be sleeping in the lightweight travel hammock. These things are super comfortable and fabulous in hot weather. The key is to string them very, very tight and put them about shoulder height because once you put your weight on them, they'll sag down to the right amount. I'll put a link in the description of where you can get these, and uh, you can also string up a mosquito net with this as well if you want. On this trip, I was fishing with bluegill. I normally like to use live bluegill, but cut bluegill is less hassle, and you can get better distance when casting. So when I'm fishing from the bank, I often will use cut bluegill. Sit on my lap. Sit it's on my lap, buddy. It's oh. not a skin. It's not too bad. Oh, look at that. He's a wolf like a bit. He's a not scary creature. He's a not scary creature. Yeah, look at that. He feeds me to catch up upper pools. All right, should we let him go? Let me go. Oh, oh, oh. Watch out. Oh, oh. Ow. There you go. These alarms I'm using are really helpful, but they're also the cheapest, lowest end alarms you can get. And look at the rod on the left. There's a fish totally on there, and I ended up losing that fish because that alarm never went off, and I was too distracted by the other fish to notice. A good alarm is worth its weight in gold. If you're fishing multiple rods, if you're bringing kids along, if you're trying to get a little nap while you're fishing, you need a good alarm. Now, if you have any doubts about how strong my rod setup is, keep your eye on the far right rod. My drag is set up to the max, and uh, it's about to get a wake-up call.
while all this is going on, this is the first time I noticed the rod on the left. We, yeah, it's the line hit a tree branch, and that's what rustling of the tree branches what got my attention. Yeah, the alarm was turned on and everything, but it just never went off. So, these are the cheapest alarms on the market. They're super light, they're pretty easy to use, but you get what you pay for. If you want to get a good video review of 10 different bite alarms on the market right now, uh, click on the link in the description and uh, I've did a video on that and there's some there's some pretty good alternatives out there Another, I, mean, I had your brother here on the bank a few seconds ago <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that last little kitty cat gave me a nice little souvenir to remember him by. <laughs> That's part of the fun. Now I had to go clean up the mess that made by that bite alarm not, not letting me know I had a fish on there. Lost the fish, but got my gear back. But this is what the bite alarms are for, man. If you're going to be trying to catch any shut-eye, you need a bite alarm. I'm at the age now where I need to catch some sleep while I'm night fishing. Otherwise, I'm just not going to function the next day. Is it a T-Rex? Caught some nice blue catfish and a couple decent channels. Hopefully you learned a few tips and tricks and uh, had a good time watching this video because we sure had a good time making it. At any rate, um, if you'd like to see more videos from uh, me and Tom here on the Cats and Carp uh, YouTube channel, don't forget to click subscribe. And don't, no, don't leave me! <laughs> Thanks for watching! If you like that video, check out these other two videos, including six of my favorite bank fishing hacks and how to catch catfish with bluegill. If you uh, have any questions or have videos that you'd like to see, leave a comment in the comment section. And thanks for watching. <laughs>